half of time. Two years of tragedy, disaster, almost despair. We have endured unbelievable trials. We have weathered unimaginable storms. We have fought a long, wearing, defensive battle on many fronts, and the British Empire is still standing steady as a rock. We have astonished the world of faint heart who expected to see us fall. Now is the time for us to advance and smash Nazi Germany once forever. We may congratulate ourselves on much of the past. As we enter this new phase of the war, we should do well to examine our country. Ask ourselves, what are we doing for victory? Nobody is such a fool as to think that every young man lying in the sun is a slacker. He may be resting from many grueling hours of exacting duty. But you know many men and many women who are still living selfish lives, who still make no contribution to war effort, who still are content to let someone else do the work and the worrying and take no share themselves, who still don't realize that we in Britain are fighting for our lives. Aircraft workers have done a wonderful job. We needed enough fighters to save Britain and we got them. We had enough bombers to drop a thousand tons of bombs on Germany in one week in August. Let's have enough to drop 10,000 tons a week in December. You're doing well. Ask yourselves if you can do even better. The call is now for tanks. Tank factories have turned on the steam and production has leapt up. Ask yourselves if you can do even better. Armament workers are going great guns. But in every kind of factory and in every other kind of war work, there are some who are not giving 100% effort. Ask yourself if you are giving all you've got to Britain's effort for victory. Ask yourself if your life and your family are not worth just a little bit more. This is your land. Your ancestors kept it sacred from the heel of the invasion. This is your heritage and your right to live in liberty and at peace. Ask yourself if you want to read in this lovely country instructions in German telling you what you must do for Hitler. Ask yourself if you want to see in Britain the things that we shall show you now in the land of the Soviets. is the start of the advance in Kovno, in Lithuania. Before Stalin's scorched earth policy could be put into effect, Nazi barbarians in a field of standing corn. In the path of the Nazis, always. Death, destruction, misery. Once again, the Luftwaffe has been engaged on fearful destruction. <laughs>
This is the German mentality. This is the race we have been fighting for over two years. These pictures were shown to Germans and to neutrals as a glorious example of German handicraft. This is what Germany is proud of. This is another feat of German arms. Short range shattering of little farm buildings, somebody's office. The joy and the comfort and the livelihood of decent men, massed to fragments by the juggernaut of Fratton Lust. It's up to us to see that Nazis cannot do this to Britain. To work so hard, to grow so strong, that Hitler will not dare invade because he still will invade us if he can. In the place of green fields and tall trees, there are belching smoke and black ruins. The stink of high explosives. Thus the self-inflicted wounds of the Soviet people, who must destroy a part of themselves to keep the whole from defeat. Soviet aerodrome. Nazi warplanes swept out of the clouds on that Sunday invasion morning with no declaration of war. Germany got in the first blow, but the heroic Red Air Force have since been paying back with interest. Gallant Soviet Union, too, needs bombers. For despite all the losses, we shall pay back in full the destruction Germany has wrought in the world at large. We've got to win this war. You have seen what we're up against. Nothing less than your greatest efforts can do it. <laughs>